Alfreda the City Penguin by Maya Idelson. Illustrations by Sharon Matter. The sun was setting as Alfreda and her gang swam into St Kilda Harbour. It was time to return to their home in the rocks that formed the harbour's breakwater. For 40 years, the rock wall had protected small sailing boats from angry seas. Now, it was also shelter for about 200 fairy penguins. The penguins made yapping sounds as they swam cautiously towards the shadowy structure. Perhaps they were asking each other if there was any danger at them. Then, as if a secret signal had been given, the birds surged forward onto the rocks. Their black and white coats glistened in the lights from the city behind them. Alfreda's nest was at the end of a rock tunnel, high up on the breakwater. Quickly she clambered up to it. Like most penguins, Alfreda was house proud. Fortunately, everything seemed to be in order. Her dried seaweed, her piece of potato chip packet, of which she was very fond, her mussel shell and a length of blue string. Luckily, there was no sign of fishing line something which Alfreda had good reason to avoid. The previous autumn, a boy called Angus had found her tangled in some line. Angus was a member of a volunteer group called Earthcare that regularly visited the penguins. The nylon line had cut deeply into the flesh of Alfreda's leg. Alfreda had sat blinking in the torchlight while the group decided what to do. Urgent action was needed. Alfreda was driven to the nearby Alfred Hospital at midnight. She was quickly surrounded by a group of surprised doctors and nurses. Nobody had ever seen a penguin at the hospital before. The other patients were completely forgotten as Alfreda was taken to the front of the queue. The hurtful line was cut away and the wound was cleaned. When it was time for her to return to her burrow, the nurses were sorry to see her leave. Come again, they called. Alfreda still had two souvenirs of that night. One was her name. The other was a black circular mark left by the fishing line, like a tattoo around her right leg. Accidents and even deaths were not unusual in the little penguin colony. Alfreda had lost her mate in a shark attack the year before. He had been feeding on a school of pilchards and had not seen the giant fish rising from below. Alfreda had not been able to find a new mate before the breeding season began, so her burrow had been empty of eggs and chicks. All through the summer, she had listened unhappily to the cheeping of chicks in other burrows. However, it was unlikely that Alfreda would be lonely for long. At the moment, she was looking magnificent in a new coat of feathers. During February, she and her gang had all molted. Old feathers had fallen out to be replaced by new ones. And for a while, all the birds looked like burst cushions of down. Alfreda heard a splash and stuck her head out of her burrow. A large water rat searching for mussels glared at her. The water rats also lived in holes in the breakwater. Alfreda often saw their leftover meals of crab and mussels on the flat rocks near the water's edge. Most of the time, Alfreda ignored the rats. During the breeding season, however, all the penguins kept a sharp eye out for anything that might steal an egg or chick. From her burrow, Alfreda could see the streetlights on the other side of the harbour. The breakwater was located near the beach of the city's busiest suburb. On the shore, Tourists crowded the beaches, markets and amusement park. Heavy trucks pounded along the beach road and the many drains poured their stormwaters into the sea. During the night, Alfreda sang the unmusical calls of her species. Standing upright and flapping her flippers, she trumpeted her need for a partner. She also visited her neighbours. She slept, but never for long. Penguins only sleep for about four minutes at a time. Perhaps she dreamt. Finally, she oiled her feathers using oil from a gland hidden near her tail. Oil. For the warm-blooded penguins, it was the key to their survival. Oil from the fish they eat helps protect them from the freezing seas during fishing trips that can last for weeks. 
Oil was also important to the three million people living nearby in the city of Melbourne. So important that great ships carrying thousands of tonnes of oil regularly passed the breakwater on their way to the refinery only five kilometres away. Well before dawn, Alfreda and her friends slipped quietly into the sea. In the water, they changed from upright waiters to sleek torpedoes, using their flippers to fly underwater in pursuit of fish. During their fishing trips, the penguins often met up with other creatures. Many kinds of fish, such as snapper, flathead, whiting, pilchards and sharks, shared Port Phillip Bay. Sometimes fur seals and bottlenose dolphins would surf playfully through the middle of the birds, enjoying the sight of penguins shooting off in every direction. On this particular day, all the creatures of the bay were unaware that a deadly menace was moving upon the water. A menace that most had never met before and against which they had no natural defences. Several hours before Alfreda's gang had set out, a pipeline carrying oil from the wharf to the refinery had cracked. The pipe was old and had been poorly maintained. The oil poured out onto the road and into the stormwater drains. The drains ran into a creek not far from where it entered the sea. Before dawn, a workman noticed the spill and raised the alarm. In the dark, emergency workers struggled to lay an inflatable boom across the mouth of the creek to stop oil escaping into the sea. They were too late. Dawn revealed the full extent of the disaster. A huge shining slick had spread from the mouth of the creek into the bay. The wind blowing from the west moved it slowly across the bay towards the opposite shore. The St Kilda breakwater lay directly in the path of the black gunk. Unaware of the danger, Elfrida and her gang were fishing among beds of seagrass when from above came the droning sound of an aircraft. The plane swooped down low over the ocean and dropped a load of chemical dispersants. It helped to break up the middle part of the oil slick. However, the outer parts joined up and moved on. Elfrida, rising from a dive, found herself covered in the nasty gunk. She swallowed some of the mixture and immediately vomited the fish she had caught. In desperation, she dived again, only to rise once more into the stinking oil. Looking around, she could see her friends were also in trouble. By this time, the gunk had soaked into the penguins down, removing their waterproofing. Alfreda found herself getting very cold and starting to sink. Her throat burned from the oil. To survive, she knew she had to make it to land, even though she feared the shore as the home of foxes, dogs and humans. She summoned up the little strength she had left and swam for the beach. Half an hour later, a jogger paused for breath in the car park outside the Brighton Sea Baths. He was astonished to find a group of fairy penguins standing there, shivering in the early morning light. Alerted by his telephone call, an animal ambulance soon arrived. Elfrida and the others were captured by the driver, wearing gloves. The penguins were still able to give a slashing bite. The driver wrapped cloth around the torso of each penguin and carefully placed them in cardboard boxes. A few kilometres away at a wildlife shelter, there was feverish activity in preparation for the penguins' arrival. The shelter was in an old house owned by Neenan, for many years, she had cared for sick and injured creatures. Neenan and earth care helpers laid out a row of plastic tubs filled with lukewarm water. Using sponges, they began to gently wash the birds to remove the poisonous gunk. Alfreda showed no concern at all at finding herself living in a laundry instead of a burrow. Her main interest was in the shelter's menu. The gang had huge appetites and they demanded regular service from their landlady. Neenan grumbled often about that insatiable bunch of beaks. With Alfreda and the gang safe at the shelter, wildlife officers and members of Earth Care began searching for other injured creatures. It soon became clear that finding them would not be easy. The July weather was terrible, rain and heavy seas. It was impossible for a small group of people to search the 260 kilometre coastline of Port Phillip Bay. Angus suggested that they throw the problem open to the people of Melbourne. 
Calls went out to newspapers and radio and television stations asking people to go to their local beaches to look for injured wildlife. The media surrounded the wildlife shelter, seeking film and photographs. That was how Alfreda and a companion came to appear on national television and on the front pages of over a million copies of the morning newspapers. Alfreda managed all this attention with patience and modesty. Fame did not matter. Her great passion in life would always be oily fish. Over the next week, other seabirds were rescued on the beaches. Many others were found dead. Nobody will ever know how many birds died at sea. After a week, Elfrida and her gang were moved to the Melbourne Zoo to prepare them for returning to the sea. This meant spending more and more time in a special pool as their feathers recovered from the oil. Six weeks after the oil spill, the birds were released on a local beach, watched mostly by people from newspapers and television stations and politicians who made speeches. Elfrida came out of her box and cautiously looked around. She liked the feel of sand under her webbed feet, and she could smell the sea. She walked away from the wall of humans and called to her friends. Only half of her original gang was left. The rest had been killed by the nasty gunk. The birds waddled into the surf and launched themselves into the water. Neenan watched the birds swim away with tears in her eyes. In November, a visitor to the breakwater noticed a familiar black mark on a familiar penguin leg. Alfreda! shouted Angus with joy. Alfreda was also happy. She was full of her favourite oily fish, as was her new mate and their two fat chicks. <laughs>